I would consider the data model to be the heart of your Power BI report. And for that heart to keep functioning well, you've got to follow some best practices. What are mine? I'll discuss that in this video. Let's start. Best practice number one, merge the one-to-one -one relationships if there are any in your model. Take a look at this model. We have the products table, which is connected to my sales table. And to the products table, there is another table connected, which is products revised. Now, the difference between the products table and the products revised table is that maybe the names of the products changed. So we brought another table, connected that with the products table and made another column called revised product name. Now, in order for the products revised table to go propagate the filter to the sales table, it needs to traverse through two different relationships. First, it's going to go from here to here, the products table and then the filter is going to go from here to the sales table. It creates unnecessary complexity in the model and I would highly recommend the time that you see one-to-one -one relationship in the model, it's time to go back to the data source or maybe Power Query or maybe SQL and apply a merge and whatever columns that you need from this table, you can get it out in this table and that's going to make your model simpler, cleaner and definitely more faster. Best practice number two, check and reduce the granularity of your fact tables. Take a look, what do I mean by this? Now I have this sales fact table that you can see up on the screen. And here I have the transaction ID. That means one single row means one single transaction. And on one particular day, there could have been two transactions. Second January is hence duplicated. Now let's just take a look at the visual that I'm working with. Here uh, I have the year coming from the calendar table. The channel is coming from the sales table. And then against that, I have total units. And maybe I would want to find out that what is my daily average units that are being sold. Now, I would want you to pause this video for a quick second and I would want you to go ahead and write the DAX for daily average units. Units happens to be a column of the sales table, nothing that complicated. How would you write that measure? All right, if you attempted to write the measure daily average units and you wrote something like this, average of the sales table and the units column, this is not correct, my friend. Now, the reason why this is not correct is because you are taking the average of all the rows of the sales table. So if I just go ahead and take a look at my sales table, it's not going to be the average of this particular column because the average of this particular column means the average of the transactions because one row is one single transaction. And that's what I mean to say by checking the granularity of the fact table that you're working with. If your fact table happens to be more granular than what you need, then obviously you're going to be tricked in some critical average calculations. Now the correct calculation obviously for the daily average units is going to be something like this. So you can say, hey, daily average units, and I'm going to maybe divide total units by the number of unique days. Unique days is nothing but the distinct count of the sales date table. You could have also written the same calculation, something like this. Since we have the calendar table or the date table and the granularity of the date table is by the day or the, you know, a single date, then I can say that, hey, go in every single row of the calendar, which is every single date, and then find total units and then take an average of that. Both the measures are right. I would prefer this because it doesn't trigger context transition. Anyways, that is the calculation, which is the correct calculation. And I would highly recommend that if you don't need the granularity to the deepest level in your sales table, please use Power Query, SQL, whatever data transformation tool and reduce the granularity of your fact tables. Calculations are happy, data is smaller, model becomes faster. Amazing. Best practice number three, reduce the number of columns that you have in your fact tables especially. Now, a lot of times you're going to see that people are going to cram the columns in the fact tables just because of the reason they might feel that I might need it in the future. Now, this is not the approach that I will suggest you to take. At the moment, if you're developing the model, I will highly recommend that you take a look at the 20% of the columns that you need that are going to support 80, 90% of all the analysis that you want to present as of date. And when you have the need for having more columns maybe you can add them later but for now keep the model as light as possible think of the model as the plate in which you're eating do not really load that with too much food it's not going to be good for the model another um, aspect that i would want you to consider is that now that you've decided you want to delete a few columns from the model the question is which columns should you delete from the model go for the columns that have very high cardinality a cardinality simply means the number of unique values in case the column has a lot of unique values that's the column that you would want to get rid of make sure that that column is not being used in the model anywhere if that is not being used that's the column that you would want to delete right off 
from the model. Best practice number four, create a date column even if you don't have a legit date available to link it with the calendar table. So I have this budgets table right here and we get yearly budget. So we have the year here and we have the band here and you can see that we have a couple of bands but then the budget is being given to you by the year. You don't really have months or products or dates or things like that. So having the year means that I don't have a legit date. And what I've done is I've created a date out of that year and I have still used this date to link it with my calendar table. Where is that? Right here. And that year date column has been linked with the calendar table. This is going to allow you to do any time intelligence calculations very, very effectively. Even though you did not have a legit date, create the date and link that with the calendar table. Best practice number five, use a bridge table in order to avoid many to many relationships. Please take a look. Now I showed you the budgets table and the budgets table has got the yearly budgets for a particular band. Now, if I try to maybe link the band with the products here, the unfortunate part is the products table is not at the granularity of the band. However, it's the granularity of the product. Hence, if I just go ahead and link this with the band right here, both the bands are duplicated and it just shows you a many to many relationship. A lot of people just go ahead with this type of stuff. And this might create ambiguity in the model and I would not recommend you to go ahead for many to many relationships. Now, how do we solve this problem? We're gonna solve this problem using a bridge table, which is where we will have the unique bands present. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this band right here and link that with a unique bands table that I have created, which is like a bridge table connects the budgets and the products table together. So. I'm just going to go ahead right, right to the band and then select that and link that with the band right here which creates a one-to-many relationship and the band right here is also going to be linked right here which is again going to create a one-to-many relationship. Now anywhere in your visual you want to seek the brand in the visual not the brand but the band in the visual you're going to maybe select the band from here and that band is going to now filter your budgets table that band is going to filter your products table which in turn is going to propagate the filter to the sales table and that's the clean way of making a bridge table to avoid many to many relationships all right that's been it let me know if you have any questions around this one i'll be glad to reply also do comment about the best practices in data modeling that you follow on all your models i'll be glad to take a look at those as well in the end a big shout about my dax and my power query training courses in case you are a beginner and you'd like to start with the fundamentals first and then even move on to solving more difficult more challenging problems even of your own data i'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses it's going to be super awesome Thanks so much for sticking all around and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye now.